Hey everyone, welcome back to Jack Mock. So today I have a more of a unique video for you in which I'm counting down my top 10 favorite sets of all time. And first off, my list is definitely not the right list. I'm just coming from my own personal point of view and kind of more of a like experienced Lego builders point of view. So my list is not the right list, it is just my list and I would love to hear yours down in the comments section. So please just let me know. And if you're going to mix up the order of the sets that I had, just comment. I would love to hear it. But I'm basing my list off of a couple of things. The first one being minifigures, aesthetic, price, design, play features, and just overall display. Display is probably the biggest for me because if it's going to be, because as you can see behind me, I have a bunch of sets on the shelf. So if it doesn't look good on a shelf, it's not going to work for me, even though it might have a ton of play features. It needs to look good, and that's what I'm aiming for. So let's go into number 10 right now. So for number 10, we have the Redstone Battle from Minecraft Dungeons. So this is probably one that's surprising all of you, and you're probably going to laugh at me and be like, you included this set over so many other sets. Well, yes, I am. And here's why. This is probably one of the most displayable sets I've ever seen. You can put it absolutely anywhere. And it looks good just because of the fact that it's not situated on a platform. It's just many separate little individual parts that you can store anywhere. So you can put it next to your bed stand. You can put it on a shelf. You can put it right next to one of your architecture sets. And it looks fantastic. And that's because of all the neutral colors. But what's also great about it is that it comes with such a bargain. For 30 bucks, you're getting over 600 pieces which is great, and all of these pieces are more exclusive pieces, such as the translucent red bricks, which are kind of hard to find at times, and if you're wanting to make, like, let's say, a mock that includes a bunch of fire, this is the set to get because it comes with those parts. But let's not forget the minifigures. It comes with so much minifigure gear, you just gotta love it. While I do like the build for the jungle abomination a little bit better than this, this set just overall captures so much more and is so much more worth it in every way. I like the table, I like the pig, and I just love the minifigure selection. For number nine, we have the Majestic Hogwarts Icon Series Hedwig. So this set is just fantastic in every right, but I'm gonna go over the bad before the good, because there are only a few. First off being, why doesn't this come with a Harry Potter figure? This is Harry Potter stuff. I get that they wanted to include three 20th anniversary figures that we haven't gotten, but I would have liked to have seen at least a new or exclusive Harry Potter figure, because this is his stuff. It's his wand, it's his owl, I would have liked to have seen that. The other thing is that I would have included a little bit more detail and insight onto each um, individual part, because we have two books right here that we don't know what they are. Like for example, the bottom book is Tom Riddle's Diary, then we have two books that we don't know what they go to, and then everything else has a purpose. So if this is just gonna be used as filler, they should have used something a little bit um, more inclusive to the books or kind of a reference to the books themselves instead of just sticking two random uh, school books right there. Like maybe the monster book from The Prisoner of Azkaban would have been a great touch. But with the bad out of the way, let's just kind of move on to the good. So first off, the first thing we can all agree on is that the best and most well-designed part of this entire set is hands down the owl. It looks like a legitimate owl. It is sturdy and the feather design is honestly pretty unique. The fact that they were able to take a bunch of curved snot bricks across the sides of the feathers right here to kind of give it that nice fluffy feel pays off so well. I like the eyes a whole lot the uh, printed eye pieces, they look fantastic. And I like how you can kind of display the head in any way, shape and form you want. But the best thing about the owl is its scale. It fits the scale so incredibly well that it just puts a smile on your face. Likewise, the other standout, at least for me, are the little potions. These are just such well-designed little potions. They look legitimately like Harry Potter potions from the little studs in the middle to each creating a unique effect from Polyjuice to Gillyweed to the Luck Potion. It's just fantastic. So in short, I would highly recommend this set to anyone who is purely just buying a set for display because this is honestly one of the best sets to get there. It is a nerd's dream come true and it just puts a smile on my face every single time I see it. So that's why it earns the number nine spot. For number eight, we have the Upside Down. Now this set is just amazing. The fact that I can grab it, physically flip it upside down, 
or right side up, depends upon your choice, is just so awesome. This set is just fantastic in every right. You can tell that the designers actually cared about this set a whole lot when designing it. The overall just details are just amazing. There's not one bad angle for this set and I just love it. I would say the design itself is just so superb and so unique that you just gotta love it. So overall, from a very creepy atmosphere, a fantastic design, and just a stellar minifigure selection, this set earns the number eight spot. So for number seven, we have the UCS 2021 Tumblr set. When I say UCS, this set deserves it. It is capturing the iconic look of the Tumblr so well. I just love it. This captures every look from the Dark Knight's Tumblr. It just looks fantastic. From the cockpit itself to the side railing to the armor it produces to the tires oh my god it looks like the tumbler and this is in a lot of ways what Hedwig should have been a great set with some play features and basically a nice stand to put in an interesting angle um while Hedwig is probably a little bit better in the display department this features just so much more elements to it that it one-ups Hedwig big time but the figures themselves are the catch-22 for me. It comes with two fantastic figures, which are some of my favorite, but it doesn't come with enough. I would have included two more figures, a Jim Gordon and a Harvey Dent slash Two-Face, because while Joker and Batman are two very fantastic figures in their own right, for a set this large for 2,200 pieces, I would have included two more figures. The main reason I'm putting it at number seven on this list is primarily because of the fact that it comes with a stand. With the stand, I can basically put it any way I want. I can display it in any way I want, and that's what I'm wanting from UCS sets like this. When it comes with a vehicle, I want to be able to put it on a stand and kind of put it in that interesting angle. So when I put it in my Lego collection, it stands out. And that is why it is number seven on my list. For number six, we have the Blacksmith's Workshop Lego Ideas. So this is just fantastic. This set encapsulates what I want from a classic set reimagined. From the Black Falcons to the overall look, this is a modernized Lego set at its form. They took the medieval cottage, stable, and blacksmith shop and basically threw it all in together into a blender that just creates such a nice mix of things from the overall design of the house it just blows my mind from the roof the roof using all those shield pieces is just mind-blowing to me from all the intricate designing of the apple tree to basically the foundation of the house it looks amazing this is just a lego fans dream come true in so many respects and i can never say enough about it
overall, what kept this from the top five, at least for me, was the minifigures. Much like the Dark Knight set, I would have hoped for a little bit more minifigures from it. I would have at least included two more figures, because while four figures is appropriate for the set, I would say that it was doing the bare minimum. But that's just a minor complaint in the grand scheme of things, because this is a set that is worth it on every level. That is why it has the number six spot on my list. We are now entering the top five, so be sure to comment your thoughts on the list already, but please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And with that being said, let's move on to the number five spot. So for number six, we have the LEGO Ideas Pirates of Barracuda base set. This is what I would consider to be the best idea set. This one ups the blacksmith shop by so many areas. Number one, they literally took the idea of building a pirate set and no pun intended, went overboard with it. They created such a weirdly attractive set through just so much chaos, but they somehow make that chaos organized. They kind of make it so cohesive from this massive shipwreck that's been turned into this massive fortress. It's just insane. For number four, we have possibly the most detailed LEGO set ever released, the 2021 Ninjago City Garden set. This is nothing short of a behemoth set. This took me 14 hours to assemble, and I'm so happy about it. The fact that it's not even completely in camera view is a testament to its size. This is definitely just ambition at its finest. They took all these different elements and mushed them together. The fact that it gets from from the lower levels starting out to like more ancient temples and much more like rundown stores. As it goes up, it gets more modern. It's just such a fascinating detail. The designers took so much care to introduce so many dynamic and unique pieces into the set. It's like they were placing bets with one another about who could place the most individual unique pieces in this set. From the koi fish to the overall tree design, so much thought was put into this and I love it. One of the best aspects, at least to me about this set, is the minifigures. It comes with 27 minifigures, and I could not be happier with that. It just fills the city with so much population, so much life when it's displayed. I just love it. But the thing about it is that it has so many great angles to it. You could flip it to its side, just like that, and it looks great. It looks great from this side. I do have one complaint though. The reason this set is number four on the list is because of this. As you flip it towards the back, you can see that there's this large parking lot space that kind of needs to be filled. And so it kind of drags away from the model itself when you have this giant space that there's nothing, but you have this towering building. I would have included something more right here, such as maybe another shrine at least, but it kind of has that parking lot feel to it. And that's why it's at number four. With all of the great details included in the set, it's always going to make the top five in whatever list possible. And the fact that it includes such a great piece count for at such a discount price is just stellar. Lego, I will buy whatever Ninjago set that is big that comes out like this if you just produce it. I promise, whatever set I will buy, I will be the first person in line. This has proved to me Lego Ninjago is not dead and is going to continue to producing mind-blowing sets. This set is number four on my list. For number three, we have the Daily Bugle. No top 10 Lego set list is complete without this set. This set is the ultimate superhero set. I only have two faults with it. I'm going to get those out of the way right now. Number one, the Spider-Man car thing... No, I'm not a fan. The fact that they included this to begin with is kind of stupid. There is no need for it. Of course, I'm going to keep it because it's part of the set, but it, overall, it's just kind of stupid and pointless. The next thing, though, is the inside of the buildings doesn't have much studs to connect minifigures. So when you're displaying the figures inside the buildings, it's quite hard at times to display them when it's all snot tiles. But with that out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. Right out of the gate, this is probably LEGO's best modular building that they have ever released. Yes, this is meant to be a modular building as it connects to other modular sets via, you know, the little Technic pins on the sides of the building. 
this is the best skyscraper they have come out with, and this will probably remain the best skyscraper they have come ever come out with. They capture the aesthetic and design of a New York building so well, it looks like they literally ripped it out of the comic book page, and that's why I love it. The next aspect about it is the minifigures. The fact that it comes with 25 minifigures that are all important to the Spider-Man lore and universe is just fantastic from Miles Morales to Spider-Man, Green Goblin, Venom, Carnage, Punisher, Blade, all of these figures just add up to create such an awesome set. They have so many opportunities to kind of create these great scenarios within displaying and playing with the set that almost anyone can enjoy it from an adult to a young kid. And that is the true glory of this set. It's that it's meant for anyone. Anyone can enjoy it. So from the amazing scenes within this set to all the intricate design to the overall scale and ambition, this set is a solid number three. I know previously I've stated it's the best set of all time. I kind of, I'm gonna draw that statement back because the next two are just super fantastic sets. Our number two spot belongs to the Hogwarts Castle Mock. This is essentially one of the greatest castles LEGO's ever come out with, and this is hands down one of their best sets that they've ever come out with. This is such an intricately designed set they literally, I cannot even imagine taking on the mammoth task of designing this set. This must have taken years. I remember when it came out in 2018 and I was so skeptical of getting it because I wasn't into miniature scale models. I was into minifigure scale models. But this blew my mind once I completed it. It is so much bigger than the box or pictures give it credit for. It is huge. But what adds to it is the design overall. It has such a unique aesthetic and design to it that it stands out from the other Harry Potter sets in which it feels much more fluid and dynamic and loyal to this overall Harry Potter lore itself than any set that has come before it. And that's because they follow the overall theme of Hogwarts, which is like it's just this giant and grand castle with so many rooms, hidden staircases and stairwells. It's just amazing. The biggest compliment I have to give it, however, is the fact that they made miniature scale work. When building miniature scale models, it's really hard because some pieces are either too big to use or too small or kind of feel redundant because when you're building something that's small scale, it's kind of hard to pull off, but they pulled this off perfectly and that's why I'm kind of in awe about it. They make it look so fluid and so nice so that when you consider the entire scale of the model itself, it's just amazing. The biggest problem with designing a set like this, or at least anything for an iconic series like Harry Potter, is getting the set right. I would say much like the Shire or Helm's Deep or Mordor or the Eye of Sauron, this is just probably one of the biggest staples in fantasy for in terms of locations. If one thing was off about this set in terms of how it represents Hogwarts itself, the entire thing would be off. But what mainly gives this entire model life is its angular shape. This isn't going by the conventional, oh, it's on a square platform and it's going from there, much like the typical Hogwarts set is. No, it takes the formula and flips it upside down. As you can see, the Great Hall is primarily at an angle. And this entire set, as we view the back portions of it, is angular. But what also gives it life is the small uh, micro figures strewn throughout the model. It makes it look like the school is alive and which it's supposed to be because Hogwarts is a school at the end of the day. It's not just a fortress sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And what also makes this model is the small stickers strewn throughout. As this is micro scale, this is a little bit more prone to like boring sights, so to speak, as the rooms might get tedious because there's only so much you can tackle with micro scale. But the fact that they took time to develop pictures as shown in the staircase right here, just proves how much talent was poured into this. Also, just building things to the scale of micro figures so well, such as the benches and tables for the great hall, the flags or the staircases, it's just a nice touch. Because the outside looks like a location, it kind of looks like an architecture set. But when you flip it around, it is a micro scale set. The only thing I have to say about this model is get it, buy it, it is worth it. It is worth it to put this thing on your shelf. It is worth it for the design, 
the miniature scale, all the aesthetic designs. If you are a Harry Potter fan, this is a must have. Forget Hedwig, forget all of those other sets. This is the set to get if you're a Harry Potter fan. I highly recommend it, but let's move on to number one. Was there ever any doubt about number one? Here we have the 2016 UCS Millennium Falcon, and this is probably one of the most iconic ships within sci-fi ever, and it's probably one of the rec most recognizable Star Wars ships or vehicles ever. Besides the at, -AT this set, you just look at an outline of it, and you're like, yes, that's Millennium Falcon piloted by Han Solo, and that's just telling to it, but the most impressive thing about this set is that it captures that design so perfectly. If even one thing was off, the entire set would have been off. And so that must have been such a grueling task on the side of the developers and designers for this set because if they didn't get it right the first time, the LEGO fans, especially the Star Wars community, would have ripped it to shreds. And this is just a telling set. But what makes this set so amazing is its detail. This is probably hands down the most detailed set ever released by LEGO. It surpasses the Daily Bugle, Ninjago City, and Hogwarts easily. But this is such a, also a massive set. They made it to this minifigure scale, which I love. This is supposed to be minifigure scale, and they captured it perfectly. But going on to minifigures, it has a stellar cast of figures from sequel characters to prequel, to you know some or, or original trilogy figures. It's just amazing. And they captured every aspect of it perfectly. It's stellar how much detail and thought was put into this. You could tell that this Lego was really trying to say thank you to fans. Whether it was original Lego collectors or just Star Wars fans in general, this is a love letter to them. And this is Lego's best set hands down, and this is my favorite set hands down. And I hope you all agree with me and that we can all just agree that this is hands down Lego's magnum opus. I'm okay with this being the last Millennium Falcon they ever make because this will never be topped, honestly. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, keep on building.